Hello, welcome to today's lecture. We shall be looking at our uh, introduction to principles of air, of air conditioning and refrigeration. In today's class, being our very first class for this semester, we shall be looking at introduction and major tools that we use in refrigeration and in air conditioning and the reference for this class is uh, right here which is modern refrigeration and air conditioning you can find this book online and also I will upload this material on the school website so before we continue what is air conditioning and what is refrigeration now air conditioning is a system for controlling humidity ventilation and temperature in an enclosed space including a vehicle so it is designed to control the humidity of a space why refrigeration on the other hand is is a system used for cooling a space in order to lower or maintain its temperature below the ambient temperature so we can refer to this as artificial way of cooling and we shall be looking at an overview of our this system works now one of the key abbreviations that we shall be using in this uh, semester is the HVAC and the HVAC now HVAC stands for heating ventilation and air conditioning why HVAC stands for heating ventilation air conditioning and refrigeration so when we mention hvac we are talking about uh, air conditioners refrigeration systems heat pumps all right so when we talk about hvac it includes refrigeration or refrigerators air conditioners heat pumps and also chillers systems now what is the working fluid used in hvac system what are the working fluid used in hvac system what are the working fluid used in hvac system now the working fluids that we use in hvac system for example in your refrigerators your acs are called refrigerant refrigerant is a type of gas it's a gas that we use in um, refrigerators in ACs in chillers all right and the common types of refrigerant that we use includes refrigerant 134a we have refrigerant 22 we have refrigerant um, 410 we have refrigerant 600a and the list con goes on and on and please note that refrigerant 22 has been phased out because of its chlorine content which is harmful to the ozone layer as we continue in this uh, discussion we shall be talking more about refrigerants and the different types of refrigerants the color codes for refrigerants the chemical composition of refrigerants and the properties and safety numbers for the different types of refrigerant so note that refrigerant is as blood is to humans okay so just as blood is to humans so a refrigerant is to an hvac system when hvac system is low on refrigerant it can affect the efficiency of that 
HVAC system. So are we looking at some major tools that we use in HVAC? Please note that we have so many tools, but are we alight some major tools in this video? Now, one of the two we use, we have the wrench and the screwdrivers. Of course, we have some uh, bolts and nuts on our HVAC systems. So we use screwdrivers, we use wrench to, um, to loosen the nuts and bolts. We also have what we call the tube cutters. What you are seeing here is a tube cutter. It is used to cut the refrigerant pipes. All right, so the tube cutters are used to cut the refrigerant pipes. What you are seeing on your screen is a tube cutter in operation. Okay, so that is a tube cutter in operation. That is how we use the tube cutter we fix the, the the tube in between that uh, space there then we 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 rotate the tip cutter as you rotate the tip cutter it cuts the tubes so that is how we use a tip cutter to cut a refrigerant pipe what you are seeing on your screen is called a flaring tool. Now, a flaring tool and a swish tool are almost similar, but they are not the same. A flaring tool is used to to widen or to uh, to to open the end of a tube. I will show us an example right here. So, what you are seeing here, this is a flaring tool, and as you can see, it has different sizes, just as refrigerant pipe comes in different shapes and size so you put you have to know the size of the refrigerant and you put that um, refrigerant pipe into the corresponding uh, hole then you can flare this end okay so when you flare the end it, be, it, it becomes like this when you flare the refrigerant end it looks like this so the purpose or the reason why we flare the ends of the refrigerant pipe is for us to be able to use uh, the adapters all right so that we can we can join two ends together okay so we can call the the flare end the the female and the on flare end can be called the male all right so we have to flare one end of the refrigerant pipe so that we can be able to uh, connect those two pipe this is very important when we are installing hvac systems for example if you are installing split units you will have to connect pipes all right so flaring tools is a very important uh, tool that we use in HVAC systems. Here is the bending tools. On your left, this is a bending springs. As you can see again, it comes in different size. And here is a different type of bending tool that also gives us accurate bending. All right? Now, how do we use these bending tools? most times when you buy a refrigerant tubes it comes in a coil form so we can use this bending tool to straighten the tubes for example look at this what you are seeing on your screen these are different types or different sizes of refrigerant tubes which are with their corresponding bending springs so we have to uh, insert the bend the refrigerant tubes into the bending springs then we can use our hands to straighten the refrigerant tubes so this is how we can use the refrigerant tubes what you are seeing on your screen are the uh, brazing torch and here is the map gas we use the brazing torch to like 
brace or to join and seal the refrigerant pipes after connecting the steps are these step one we flare step two we connect the unflared end to the flared end step three we use our brazing touch to like wed or brace those two ends together and we also brace to prevent leakage of refrigerants from the system so we normally connect this end of the brazing touch to the top of the map gas and we flare sorry and we brace so here is how we do the connection so this is the brazing touch and here is the map gas we connect to the brazing to the map gas we turn on and we can use this to to uh, join two ends together because when you flare and connect the unflared ends to the flared end it does not hold it very tight so for us to seal that joint to ensure that there's no leakage we have to use uh, a brazing touch and a map gas to seal that joint what you are seeing on your screen is another important tool that every HVAC engineer must have it is called the manifold gauge the manifold gauge is used to recharge an HVAC system for example if the refrigerant gas in your refrigerator or your AC is low or finished we use the manifold gauge to recharge or to refill that system now what you are seeing here this point here is the is the is the hook that we can use to hook the manifold gauge to something when recharging this red part of the gauge is the eye side while this blue part of the gauge is the low side remember that and sorry the yellow part is the auxiliary now your um hvac system for example your refrigerator has what we call the high pressure side and the low pressure side if you open your vehicle you will see that you see a part labeled h and a part labeled l the h stands for the high side of the uh, air conditioner in the car while the l stands for the low side so normally we connect the the red tube or the red hose to the eye side and we connect the blue to the low side and with this we can charge the system okay so here is uh, a diagram showing us how the recharging is done so as you can see right here the auxiliary which is the yellow hose goes into the uh, the refrigerant cylinder all right why the the red hose goes to the um, the eye side of the system and the blue goes to the low side so the refrigerant comes in from the yellow hose which is the auxiliary and goes through the blue hose to recharge the system most times when we are recharging we recharge through the the blue hose into the what system in fact we have four major components of an hvac system an hvac system has a compressor which you are seeing right here this black box the compressor is like the heart of the system it pumps the or it compresses and pumps the refrigerant gas to all part of the refrigerator or hvac system we also have the condenser the condenser is like an heat exchanger it emits the hot air from the system what you are seeing right on your screen here this uh, this thing is a condenser okay we also have the metering device and we also have the the evaporator which is the cooling coil that absorbs the the heat 
from the space or from the food all right as the heat is absorbed from the food the food gives off its its heat and it gets what cool so that is one way that uh the the space gets cool the evaporator absorbs the heat from the space and as it is absorbed the space becomes cool all right here we have another important uh, tool that you have to use as an HVAC engineer we have the leak detector we use the leak detector to detect refrigerant leakage what you are seeing here are two type of leak detector on my left is the whisper ultrasonic leak detector and on my right is the protec 5500 electronic refrigerant leak detector they are used to detect refrigerant leakage Dif uh, leak detector are compatible with some type of refrigerants for example some leak detector can detect refrigerant 134 why some others cannot detect refrigerant 134 so when buying a leak detector you have to read the manual and the description to be sure that it is compatible with the refrigerant in your refrigerator or in your ac all right so you have to understand that that leak detector has to be compatible with the type of refrigerant in your system for it to be effective what you are seeing on the screen is an engineer holding a leak detector and is trying to detect leakage in his uh, system all right so here is a leak detector so you have to you turn it on sometimes some of them gives you a blink when it detects a leakage all right so you have to run the detector through the refrigerant pipe in that system and sometimes when it gives you a blink that's indicate that there is a leakage at that point so i'll look at uh some instruments we use in hvac we have the uh, thermometer which we use to check for the temperature of the system and i have three precautions that we must uh take into consideration when using thermometer but one is that we should not use mercury in thermometer because it can be poisonous in its vapor phase so that is why we are advised not to use mercury in thermometer and also never expose thermometer to temperatures beyond the limit of its scales when you do this it can damage the thermometer and it will give you a wrong reading number three is don't allow the fluid to get so cold now when the fluid gets so cold it can freeze therefore expand and break the thermometer so that is why we don't allow the fluid to get so cold when using a thermometer in an hvac system remember it can freeze expand and break the thermometer also we have the manometer that we use to measure the pressure difference between two points on the hvac system also we also use the manometer to measure the dot pressure in the hvac system so thermometer and manometer are two important instruments that we use in hvac system i'll talk about supplies that we use now when i say supplies i'm referring to those uh, materials that we use in hvac systems that we cannot reuse that means i'm saying that supplies are those materials we use in hvac systems once that means when you use it you cannot reuse it for example we have the uh, fastening tools the bolts and knots these are some uh, supplies we have the uh, the tubes and pipings now please look on your right what you are seeing here is the refrigerant pipes 
most times the refrigerant pipes comes in this in this in this form that is why we have to use the uh, bending springs to uh, straight in the uh, refrigerant pipes so these are some examples of supplies that we use in HVAC servicing and installation so before I end this class I want to talk about some service and industry organizations that regulates the HVAC industry now for example in Jamaica we have what we call the OUR that regulates the telecommunication industry in Jamaica so also we have what we call the NAVDAC in, in Nigeria that regulates the uh, food and drugs industry in Nigeria also we have different organizations that regulate different industry so in the HVAC industry we have some organizations that regulate the HVAC industry for example we have the NET, we have the AHRI, we have the PAHRA, we have the ACCA, we have the RSES, we have the EPA, and we have the we have ASHRAE. These are some of the organizations that exist in the HVAC industry. Okay, so this is just an overview of what we shall be doing in this semester thanks for watching the video god bless you